Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is May the 2nd, 2022, and this is a regular Monday night meeting of the West Shore Photography Club. We have an image review tonight. Mike Donovan's going to review images. There is no theme, but before we get to that, let me uh, mention that next Monday night, well, Joe's going to talk about tomorrow night, the trip, and he's going to give you details about next Monday night. But next Monday night, we have a special presentation, so I might as well let Joe just take over. Go ahead, Joe. So next Monday night, the presentation is about trees and photographing trees. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, Mark Bowie from the uh, Adirondacks Photography Institute is going to talk about how to see and photograph, and mainly how do you compose a photograph of trees in a forest. Now, this is something that people are going to look at, look at us and say, trees, are you serious? And as Jim said earlier, we need to branch out a little bit and maybe go out on a limb and, uh, and try a new genre of, photo of photography. And that's what we're going to do <laughs> next Monday night. It should, be, it should be a very interesting thing. I know when I saw his presentation that I looked at trees in a totally different light and, uh, and I've really gotten into it. And it's amazing the tips and tricks that he's gonna talk about um, are very helpful. So we're gonna be doing that next Monday evening. Now for tomorrow night on our trips, we have a trip to downtown Harrisburg. Uh, this is a follow on to Jurgen Lebert's, Lebert's uh, program on urban photography. And um, we have Karen, Curtis Wilkie, uh, Eve Smith, and maybe Mark Abano, if he's available, are gonna be working with us photographing at night at 745 in downtown Harrisburg at the intersection of uh, Front and Walnut Street. And Mary was just suggesting that maybe parking on State Street right in front of the Capitol there might be a good uh, place to park. It's, it is about three blocks away. And that should be a lot of fun. You do need to bring a tripod for that because it will be night photography, but the weather is supposed to be great tomorrow night. Not gonna be any wind and it's gonna be warm and pleasant. So that's really good. Hooray, hooray. This is our third time, third <laughs> shot for it. And then on Saturday, we're going to Hershey Gardens. And Elaine, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Elaine Shook? Are you there? Okay. On Saturday, uh, May 7th at 9 o'clock, we're going to meet at Hershey Gardens. And uh, Elaine, our flower lady here at the West Shore Photography Club, among others, is going to take us through the gardens. And there's a gazillion tulips out. And she's going to show us how to compose and photograph and get wall hangers of, um, of tulips. And that's going to be on Saturday. And those are the things that are on our agenda for right now. Oh, I should. One, one other thing. We, yes. we will be continuing the program we did last week with a different little, with a little bit different flair. The program last week was taking images from the members and then processing them as a group. We're going to continue that because we didn't get through them all. And, um, but we're going to be scheduling that out probably be three or four weeks from now because we kind of have a full schedule coming up. And uh, so we're going to continue that with a twist on um, how the program is going to go. But that'll be in a couple of weeks. So don't be uh, alarmed. We're not forgetting about you. We're going to do that. Okay, Dennis, I'm done. Okay, thanks, Joe. Okay, let's get right to Mike. Uh, Mike, you can have any introductory uh, words you might like to issue. And uh, we'll get with the review. Okay, actually, there is one thing I want to mention. Um, also on the 7th of May, the same day as the trip to the Hershey Gardens, there's a Hershey Arts Festival, which is right near the Beanery. So if you're looking for a place to go to lunch, they'll have plenty of food there. And one of the photographers in our club has a booth there. I will remain nameless. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, he will remain nameless. So if it's not pouring down rain, come down and get a bite to eat and walk around and take a look at the stuff that's there. Is it for sale, Mike, or is it free? It is free to go in. My work is for sale. Oh, okay. Is that what you mean? <laughs> no, but I think 
you know, I, I think it'd be fun to see. Hopefully there'll be some other two-dimensional stuff there, paintings or drawings. That's what I hope anyway. Mm -hmm. But it's supposed to be bad weather as of now, so I'm not pleased about that. Okay, if you want to share your screen, we'll move right into the image review. All right. How do we look? We look like 14 images tonight. All right. Uh, let's see. Is that big enough or should I go for full screen? Full screen. Yeah. How's that? Didn't change. No? Mm -mm. No. All right. See if you can go. Oh, to wait, wait. It, it says it's paused. Can you see anything? Yeah, we can see the uh, the banner page. Try and go advance one page on the on the images, Mark. I mean, Mike. Okay. I don't think you're sharing. That's. I think you lost the uh, sharing of that because it didn't. All right. Didn't... Let me try a new share. Oh, resume share. Hold on. Hang on, folks. It's Mike's first time uh, doing this uh, image <laughs> review stuff. Uh, Let me do a new <laughs> share. <laughs> oh, there we go. Now. There we okay. go. There you go. All right. Let's go ahead and get started here. Normally, um, one thing that I try to do is find some kind of a uh, painter or photographer or something that might be valuable valuable for you to look at and um, get some ideas. What I came up with here was two things you might want to look at. One is a movie called The Shining, <laughs> which fits in perfectly with your image here. Uh, the other one is actually more serious. Take a look at the, the painting, The Last Supper, because your uh, perspective work here is much like that painting's perspective. So take a look at that and see what you think. All right, let's start with, with what I thought you did well. Um, I thought you handled a difficult lighting situation very well. Your symmetrical composition is symmetrical and you created a mood. And many times that's what a piece of art is made to do, send a message or um, relay ideas or set a mood. And this definitely sets a bit of a creepy, lonesome mood to me. Um, one of the things that you maybe could have thought about doing, I noticed that on the right, there's a bit of a flare, but on the left, there's hardly any. And I'm wondering if it had to do with maybe um, cleaning your the filter, if you keep a filter over the front of your lens, or if there was maybe a smudge. I saw the second light on the right has a really small one as well, but the ones on the left don't. So so take a look at that. I could be completely wrong. It might be just the lighting, but, but take a look and, and make sure you're nice and clean there on the front of the lens. Um, that's about all that I wanted to mention as far as um, doing better at the capture. Your processing really, I think, is quite good. Uh, the exposure is quite good. The, the black has detail. The white is not burned out or harsh. Um, your depth of field is, is appropriate to the image. That looks great because you can see all the way down and that, that's a sign of, of depth of field. And that's difficult in this shot because there's really not much light. So what that means is one of the things it could mean is you had a really long shutter speed and quite a small uh, aperture. It could also mean that you were using a, a bit of a wide angle lens, which tends to give you a longer, deeper depth of field but I like that it's sharp all the way down. And I think that gives you a tremendous advantage as far as your perspective goes. Um, you've heard me say before, linear perspective with the having a vanishing point, you repeated shapes as you worked your way through the image. So that I think looks really good. One thing that's kind of cool is the alternate lights 
and I, I realized that, you know, you don't put a light right above the door usually, and it's in a hotel anyway. So it's kind of cool that you're alternating light and dark, light and dark, light and dark, all the way down the hall. I like that, and it echoes a bit on the carpet as well. And in fact, the patterns in the carpet echo that. So I like that alternating light, dark, light, dark, because as, as I've said before, layers really help with depth in your image. So that's, that's a nice job there. Uh, as far as any distractions go, I mentioned that light beam. Um, you can talk about that whenever um, I ask you to explain your photograph. The lighting is excellent. The lighting is really, really good. And using available light is not always easy. And especially if you did use a long shutter speed and a small aperture, the tendency is for the light, especially a brighter light, to glow and just keep adding up on your sensor. But uh, nice job with that here. The color, this is what's known as an analogous color scheme, meaning three colors side by side on the color wheel. So you have oranges, you have yellows, and you have reds, which, which are side by side, like I said, on the color wheel. So um, real nice use of color there. It's warm colors, but not cheerful warm colors. They're, they're saturated, they're dark, they're rich. So really nice there. Um, it's, it's a, as far as creativity goes, it's not everybody who wants to photograph the hallway when they're in a hotel. So I'd say that's a uh, creative, move, creative move on your part. And all those alternate lights and shadows and really, really cool. As far as processing goes, my only suggestion is that um, beam in the front right, maybe you want to um, clone that if possible, whatever it is that you decide, or I might be completely wrong and that's just how it turned out. So nice job. You gave a good message of creepiness and loneliness. Sometimes a hotel can be a lonely place. Um, again, check the Last Supper because the perspective in the Last Supper is just about identical to the perspective that you have here in your image. Okay, who did this one? Hopefully no one's talking and not okay. muted and muted. Yeah, Rick, can you tell us who uh, the photographer was? Let's see, Rick, is Rick with us? No, or maybe Rick okay. couldn't make it this evening. Okay, let's move on to number two. All right, we okay here now? Yes. All right, uh, number two is nesting time and the inspiration I'm going to suggest to you is totally obvious, and that is John James Audubon. You might want to look at the Audubon paintings of different birds. He tried to do what you did, and that is show birds doing things, not just sitting there. I, I have a thousand pictures of birds on a branch, and some of them I really love. And I like it when the birds are moving and doing something too. And you, you captured that here. You got some activity. Um, and one other thing I wanna mention is this is exactly a perfect example of what's known as high key photography, meaning it's almost to the edge of slight overexposure. The background is white, which in this case is not a problem with, with high key work for sure. Um, one suggestion that I might have is, and this is this is really kind of ridiculous in a way, but if you shoot with your, I'm presuming a zoom, if you shoot with it looser, you'll be able to do more creative cropping. So I found myself cranked all the way out to the end of it, and I thought, what am I doing? First of all, I can hardly find the bird half the time. Well, you saw my shots on uh, on Facebook with feet hanging out of the corner and a head down in the bottom. That's a result of having my zoom too tight. So shooting a little looser will mean you won't have to have the bird centered. Uh, let's see. I, I think 
and I'm going to look again. It appears on my notes here that there was a bit of a halo, and generally that means over sharpening. So my suggestion for you in that case is do local sharpening. Use a brush and, and paint your sharpening in so that you can sharpen exactly what you want sharpened rather than doing it globally. Okay, as far as the exposure, it's great. There's details in the whites, there's details in the blacks. That far wing looks a little bit white, but it's, it's not a bother to me because it's kind of dreamy looking. It's, it's nice and smooth. Um, and besides, the light is hard on there and not on the underneath side. So, so I, I think it looks great. Generally, I like to try to allow a little bit of room for the bird or animal or even person to move into. So keep that in mind. And it's not always easy with a flying, moving, running bird, but I'm suggesting you shoot loose and then you'll have more space to crop. Uh, the V shape is really nice in the wings. I do, I like that for sure. Uh, let's see. The, the reason that I think that I've mentioned leaving more room in front of the bird is because it's a little bit easier and more pleasing to the viewer to have room for the animal to move into something rather than leave your image. It's entering your image rather than leaving. Uh, I already mentioned the high key. The uh, color work, the bill and the eye really do jump because they're actually the only things that have a lot of color. So they popped for you, that was good work. I like the line of the stick echoing the line of the legs. So that's nice in your, comp in your composition. Um, as far as processing goes, I suggested local sharpening. Uh, I'm curious as to whether you used a denoise filter on this or not, because sometimes they get a little bit too smooth actually. So uh, overall, I'd say you did fine, especially in a difficult situation. The high key looks fine. Leave a little more room for the, the animal to move into. I think you're good to go. Okay, whose is this? That was mine, Terry Lonecker. Uh I don't think I actually processed, to be honest. Okay. I think that's strictly out of the camera. And I think, it, if I remember correctly, it was the one to 400 millimeter lens. And I did oh. shoot it at the far end. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have another one where there was a bee or um, some kind of bug just in front of his bill. But I didn't think that was as good as this one. Well, sometimes also, Terry, when you're all the way out on the zoom, that will soften things just a touch as well. Okay. So okay. if you're if you're at 400, it won't hurt to be at 350 or 375, and that that may give you a sharper image and it'll give you more room to operate. All right, thank you very much for your comments. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, Mike, if we could jump back to number one, we found the photographer. Okay, good. Go ahead, Anthony. Hey, Mike, this is Anthony Tamalonis. Uh, thank you for your comments. Um, it's 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 ironic though that. The, it's very likely that my lens is dirty because I am not the <laughs> news. Uh, so yeah, I'll check that. Um, and all the things that you mentioned are what I saw. And especially, I like the black at the very, very end. Yeah. Um, and I like the red carpet and I wanted that to be lit up. So I, I brightened that up. And I, I, I used a, a fixed 35 millimeter equivalent lens. Oh, okay, and, good. and I was sitting on the floor and I shot at a 60th of a second that because that's the slowest I could go. <laughs> and I, I, I was very happy with how it came out. I had to work on the lights a lot and everything. But and then I put a slight um, to hide the door <laughs> on the left. I put a vignette around it mm -hmm. and also to bring it in, make it a little darker. Yeah, but it's yeah. but it's funny. It's funny, I want to thank last week's meeting because really I entered this photo because there were a whole bunch of things on the ceiling. And the first photo they entered, they used um, this, you know, the software to get those things out. 
And I played with that on Thursday so I could enter this Thursday. And that's really why I entered it. Well, you, you got ceiling, rid of them. You did clean, good. And I, and I remembered last night I left out one thing, the ice machine thing. <laughs> I see. No problem. It is a hotel after all. Yeah, I know, but I don't want it there. But yeah, Wait, thank you very much. You're welcome. Nice work on the carpet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I brushed that in. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, the third one, capturing irony. Um, the photographer that I'm going to suggest to you is named Elliot Erwitt, E-L-I-O-T. Sorry, two L's, E-L-L-I-O-T, E-R-W-I-T-T. -T. I think you'll find his work relates to yours, actually. Uh, what I think you did well here is that you told a story and you stirred some emotions, no matter, no pun intended, which side of the fence you're on. Um, it, it hurts, actually, either, either way you look. It's um, a great image as far as telling a story. I, I, that is awesome. Some suggestions I have that may improve your story a little bit is that you might want to back up and include the entire uh, door, the entire gate, and get a little bit lower because the private property sign there is kind of cut off and that's, that has an important message in your image. So you may want to go back and try to get lower. And again, like I said, I would, I would try to show the whole door, but your story is, is, is good. It's really, really good. As far as um, I mentioned what to do better post-processing, uh, you might want to pull back on your highlights a little bit. Can you see my cursor? Yes. Okay. You may want to pull back a little bit on the highlights. You're a little hot right here and a little hot right here. And what happens is the eye tends to go to the lightest value first. And this is what you want people to look at first so that this is a bit more of an attention grabber these these hot spots so if you want to just back off on those a little bit that'll bring even more attention to your sign um i also found some irony in the fact that your sign is red white and blue which is supposed to represent freedom actually so you have you have a bang up story here definitely um, the exposures are a bit harsh at some places. I already mentioned that, that you can take care of that. Uh, your composition, I mentioned to try some different angles. One thing that I really like is, not that, one thing that I really like is the relationship between the cross here and the cross here. They tell an absolute opposite story. And, and that's, that's pretty impressive. Uh, as far as distractions go, the private property sign being cut off, you can do that simply by moving yourself. Um, I like the cross, as I mentioned. Maybe you want to try, if you back up, your sign won't necessarily be like a target in the middle. It might be more of part of the fence, and maybe that'll help with your message, actually. Um, I also would get rid of this. And the reason I would is because it's the same value as your sign. And anything that's the same value of your sign will take away from the contrast that your sign provides. And the sign is the message. Uh, your lighting is a bit contrasty, but in a way, it's, it's kind of perfect to go with the harshness of your message. I just would back off the highlights. Your color use, as I said, the red, white, and blue is absolutely ironic. Um, creative shot, creative shot. My only suggestion as far as post-processing goes is to back off on those highlights. My suggestion as far as it goes for you and your composition is back up and try it again. Okay, whose is this? That's uh, me, Jim Brellinger. <clears throat> you hit the nail on the head, Mike. I wanted to tell a story with this picture. It's probably not a wall hanger, it's not glamorous, but I saw that it's a gate, barbed wire, fence, and a 
and a sign for a church, and that's actually the church behind it, which even added to the irony of the whole thing. Oh my gosh! <clears throat> yeah, just it just cracked me up. Uh, this was taken down Hilton Head uh, last year. We're going to be going back down in December, and I will take your advice, Mike, and back up and try to improve the composition a little bit. Thank you. You're welcome. Give it a try and see what you think. If it if it doesn't relay the message you want to relay, then stick with what what you got for sure. But it 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 really it hits, especially somebody who who attends church or is a believer or it hits hard. So that makes it a good image. <laughs> it's brutal. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, reflection, reflecting on a perfect day. Um, what you did well is you used an unusual point of view, which I, I like actually, unusual point of view. The reflections you caught, you told a bit of a story. It was a long day. It's looking like sunset. Um, I, I'm curious to hear if it's a composite or not. I'm very curious to hear that because the boat looks like it's kind of jumping out at me a little bit. And I'll, I'll address that a little later. Um, my only, that's, that was my main question. It was about the compositing. What I would suggest is that you back off on the red and the aqua on the boat so that it doesn't jump out quite as hard. And you can do that by making, a, you know, <coughs> using the eyedropper and then backing off on the red, then use another eyedropper, back off on the blue a little bit. You have the red, white, and blue going. It doesn't need to be so, so bright, really, in this case. And red, I think, gives digital uh, cameras a bit of a fit. So you may want to desaturate a little bit on, on the boat. The other part is exposed beautifully. Um, your exposure is good. Your use of depth of field is, is really good. The, the house is just soft enough to push it in the background. And so that's, that's good there. I like that. Uh, your composition is a little bit heavy to the right, but um, square is a good choice, which actually you had to make to get the whole um, reflection in and you wanted the sky obviously as well. Uh, I like the fact that, like I said, the square is good. The boat is super symmetrical. And then it leans a little bit toward the back. So it does take your eye through. As far as distractions go, um, in fact, I can say this for probably 80% of what I saw tonight is that they're clean. So when you make a print, most of these, you're not going to see any spots. Now, spots here are things on the water. You can, re you can take them off if you want to. And there's birds in the back. You can remove those if you want to. But they give a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. The golden hour lighting is, is beautiful. The red, as I said, is really powerful. You back off on it a little bit and see what you think. Um, let's see. If it is a composite, and I could be completely wrong, I would actually shrink the boat a little bit. I would shrink it a little bit. And by the way, congratulations to you for getting yourself into the water and not causing any big ripples. You did good there. Okay, so the overall lighting is good. I think the boat is too bright. So back off on that, see what you think. I like the way you backed, moved something into the background by making it just slightly softer. Very nice. Okay, whose is this? This is mine. Uh, I'm a relatively new member and this is the first time I've submitted. Uh, well, welcome, I'm glad you did. And this is uh, not a composite. Okay. Uh, I was with a friend of mine from the, Eastern Shore area, a uh, young man, Jay Fleming, a lot of you know his father, Kevin. Uh, we were out in the littoral areas of Eastern Virginia, or East Shore, Virginia, and uh, another guy that was with us, that's his boat, and 
I sort of knelt down, was lining this thing up and snapped <laughs> off a few photos of it. And then I hear this voice over my shoulder say, don't move because Jay was over me with his camera lens resting on my left shoulder, <laughs> taking the same photo. Uh, he was quick enough to turn around, put it on a cell phone and then knock it out into Facebook and all this. You know, that's fine. I don't do that <laughs> stuff anyway. <laughs> but um, I hadn't thought about toning uh, the the reds and the blues down on the boat. Uh, thanks for the comment and thanks for the uh, idea. Uh, I'll work on that. Uh, I had previously entered this twice uh, from my other camera club in different uh, competitions and uh, it was a first place winner, but uh, I like your idea of taking that red down a bit. Um, and other than that, uh, it was hard not to get wet and it was hard not to cause ripples. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you anyway. Okay, okay, so let me have this straight. Um, this is your first time to submit here and I'm the reviewer and I tell you that you need to change it, but it's a first place winner. You don't have to listen to me. <laughs> oh, I'll, li I'll listen to anybody who's got an idea about how I can make a photograph better. <laughs> nice work and congratulations. Thank you. Okay, sparring bears. Um, if, the photographer you may want to take a look at is an Alaskan photographer named Jeff Schultz. Um, he does a lot of the a lot of bears, actually, a lot of wildlife in, in Alaska. Nice and crisp. You got the peak of the action. Um, each individual hair is showing. You have a, a foreground and a background. Um, the color is actually, believe it or not, it's almost all orange. There's lighter oranges, darker oranges. Brown is actually a really, really dark orange. So you have a, a good color family here, for sure. Um, one thing that I would consider in post is, I don't know if that's bird poop or what it is on the rocks. I would get rid of that. That doesn't do anything for your image. So just wipe that right out of there. And the reason that, that I'm saying that is because the eye goes to the brightest value and you don't want it to go to the rocks. You want it to go to the bears. They have a beautiful rim light on their heads, their ears, their shoulders. That is what the attraction should be. Very, very, very nice. It's exposed well. That rim light is just beautiful. It's, it's on both ears even, on the bear in the front. It's really, really sweet. The composition, um, the bears are forming diagonal lines, which as you can see here means action and activity. So that, that's absolutely wonderful. As far as distractions go, I already mentioned clean up a little bit on the rocks in the back. The lighting is smooth and beautiful. It separates the bears from the background very, very nicely. Um, let's see, the color use, I already mentioned the orange palette. The creativity is good. One, I might suggest one thing, and that is maybe a little dodging in here. Now, how things are printed look different from how they are on a screen, I understand that. So if you're thinking, well, mine look just fine, understood. I understand completely. One suggestion I might make, and this will sound ridiculous when you're photographing bears that are fighting, you're a little tight here and you see how light that is and the attention that that draws. So I don't know if you have a wider crop available to you. I'm always, always saying shoot loose and then crop. So if you have a little more room there, you might want to back off because when the eye travels around and hits here and hits here, the tendency is to stop and look. But other than that, it's, it's fabulous. It's absolutely fabulous. Who did this one? Uh, Marlene. Um, 
I do have a bigger crop of that. It was just a bunch of logs and I didn't know if the logs would look pretty in the background. That's why I cropped it so, so close. Understood. And I don't know why the bird poop is on there. I, I <laughs> tried to take that off. <laughs> but I was worried about the rim light. I, I thought, oh, how do I get rid of that? But that's good like that? Yeah, what it, what it says is um, that it's in a zoo probably. <laughs> and yeah. it, that's what the rim light says. But I think it's beautiful. And it separates the bears from the background. Uh huh. So I say go. I say keep it. Go with it. I was wondering how you guys are going to tell me to get rid of it. <laughs> nope, nope. I, I, somebody else may have a different idea, but I like the separation and the rim light provides that because, like I said, the whole palette is orange. Mm -hmm. So you have to use values like light orange, dark orange, and so on to separate the foreground from the background, and you did that. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. And Marlene, in portrait photography, whether it's people or animals, we uh, commonly look for rim light and try to use that, utilize that as Mark's, as Mike uh, said, to separate the subject from the background. Oh, okay, that's good. I thought I blew it out. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay. Whoever did this photograph. I'm going to suggest you look at Marit Havden, M-A-R-I-T-H-O-V-D-E-N. And Marit Havlin does a huge amount of work with water drops and uh, kind of like bubbles and reflections and that kind of thing. So you might get some inspiration there. Uh, I like your composition. The um, the border that you chose, normally that doesn't necessarily play into the image, but this one does because the rounded edges repeat the rounded center, which I think is nice. It's calm. The color palette is really, really nice. Again, um, the analogous palette with the, the blues and the green side by side on the color wheel. So very nice there. Your background is beautiful soft and it differentiates from the foreground. So good work there. Uh, one thing that maybe you might want to try is some local sharpening on the bubbles, on the water drops, just around the edge so that you can define the edge a little more, make it a little bit more like a string of pearls almost. So just localize. You, the, the softness here is beautiful. But try a little bit of local, I guess with um, Lightroom, it would be a, a um, sharpening brush, I guess. So try that, see what you think. I like that it's a window into a tiny little world that, that a lot of us miss, actually. Your exposure is good. Again, the sharpness, it's hard to tell on a screen, but try that suggestion and see what you think. Your composition is good. The curves are repeated. The two diagonals in the center look really good. They actually are opposite of the curves, but yet they echo the curves. They are diagonals, but you see it, it echoes here. And this one echoes here. So nice job there for sure. Um, as far as distractions go, I would remove these two. They don't really do anything. And like I said before, contrast gathers attention. And these are contrasted to this, so, so they will. And you notice this little dark spot that's contrasted to here. Maybe you want to remove that as well. And um, if you do, I think you'll be good to go. The color work is calm. It's peaceful. It's a beautiful gradient from here out to here. Uh, I like the blues and the greens together. Very nice. Uh, as far as processing goes, I've already mentioned sharpening here and removing a couple things here. And I think you're good to go. Who did this one? OK, uh, Mike, this is Dennis. That's mine. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah, the, uh, the whole thing is about as big as my thumb, and it was in my front yard uh, about two weeks ago, 
and I was doing some work for the macro class that I'm teaching currently uh, at, uh, at Calc on Thursday mornings. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a focus stacked composite of about 12 separate images. And okay. uh, to be honest, I did not really see the minute detail, the water droplets when I was actually taking the picture. I liked the, uh, the geometry of it. Yeah, so I shot a whole bunch of sequence of images, and it was only when I got them on the computer screen that I go, oh, wow, <laughs> got a bonus. So uh, hidden details. That's, so thanks yep. for your comments. Oh, yeah, of course. Follow the yellow bricks in the road. Uh, my suggestion here is a photographer named Alan Blakely. He does a lot of interiors. Um, some with artificial light, some just with regular light. Uh, what I think you did well here was to handle the reflections absolutely wonderfully, just wonderful. There are reflections everywhere, but they, they fit in the composition. Really, really great stuff there. Uh, your composition is tremendous. The leading line, the arrows, pointing in opposite directions right to the entry door. Really good. Your repetition up here is really good. Even up here, really, really nice stuff. Um, as far as processing goes, since the title is Follow the Yellow Bricks, maybe run just a little tiny bit of a lightning. Just lighten that slightly so that it, it matches up with the title so people pick it out right away but that's that's up to you that's a that's a picky thing um i like this person back here it adds a bit of a mystery to it like they are looking for the yellow brick road so to speak really nice um one thing that i would also do is get rid of this little thing right here because your lines and i know i realize there is one here but this one's cut off, so maybe get rid of it or extend your crop, whichever you prefer as the, as the artist. Um, let's see. As far as the wow factor, it's absolutely super. Your exposure and your focus are on the button. Again, it's a difficult lighting situation and your use of depth of field is excellent, meaning that you probably had a long shutter long uh, shutter speed so good work there really good again the composition is beautiful there are many 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 repeated shapes here which is also called rhythm you have a definite rhythm going here um, you can see they get smaller and smaller and smaller which gives you a good perspective again the arrows coming from opposite directions Really nice, really, really nice. The lighting is a difficult situation and you handled it perfectly. The rich, warm palette, uh, color palette makes it welcoming, which is good because it's the welcoming center. Um, great work. Creativity, I have you made something ordinary into something extraordinary. As far as post-processing, I already mentioned uh, the yellow. You may not want to even fool with that. I would deal with this right here and this right here. Just, just pull them down a little bit, not even clone them out unless you want to, but just pull them down just a little bit because they're, they're of a higher value, of a lighter value than what you want people to look at. Other than that, it's tremendous. Who's the photographer? Uh, that's from Mary Eileen Carson. Very cool. And, um, thank you. It was one of those, it was taken uh, at, at the state capitol downstairs uh, where you, you can follow the hallway down to the, um, a lot of the, uh, some of the uh, legislators have offices down there. And I was just kind of wandering down, taking pictures, wandering down, taking pictures. And then all of a sudden it was one of those things you had to turn around and I turned around and saw that. And yeah, so I, I started taking shots of that because that, yeah, that looked really cool with all the reflections and everything. 
So um, thank you for your comments. Oh, you're welcome. And that, that brings up a good point. Once you get your shot that you want, turn around and see what you missed or see what's behind you or see if you have another chance, which I, I probably do that 30% of the time that I think of it, but sometimes it's valuable. Turn around and all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I didn't even see that. So yeah, good work. Thank you. Okay, breaking all the rules. I, I have a feeling, or I had the feeling that somebody was trying to see if I could find everything in here, like where's Waldo or something. Um, breaking all the rules made me chuckle because uh, the title actually fits, as you might be able to see. Um, I made a list of some of the rules that photographers learn and then ignore if they want to. And one of those is a merge here and a merge here, the headless zebra. Uh, of course, don't ever take animals' butts. There's gobs of butt shots. Uh, as far as your composition, Here's the lonely giraffe over here, away from the group. The little bit of harshness here, a little bit of emerge here, but you did break lots of rules, but you put the title to work. So you got an unusual shot. You have warm and cool colors, which is always a nice combination. The cool colors you can tell receded and the warm colors advanced, which they tend to do. Uh, Post-processing, I suggest you cut back on the highlights, maybe even cut back just a touch on the saturation. The other uh, rule that I think I marked down here, yeah, um, working in the middle of the day, that's another rule they always say, oh, just go out during the um, blue hour or the sunset or sunrise. If you're on a safari or you're on a trip and you've gone thousands of miles, you're not gonna say, oh, it's the middle of the day, I, I can't take any pictures. So you take them and you, you do the best you can. Now, as far as wow factor, that is a great moment for sure. A great moment. Um, I, for my taste, you're slightly overexposed. So I would pull back a little bit on the, um, the exposure just to darken things and pull back definitely on the highlights. Uh, the composition, you did a middle ground, a foreground, a middle ground, a background, and the background definitely is the background. So that's that's got some depth to it there, absolutely. As far as distractions go, I would have to say this guy right here is a distraction, he can go. Now, I looked at how you might you might crop him out. First thing I would do is clone out his head and neck. And then that'll give you more room. Because even though you say, oh, yeah, but then you have an even number. You actually have a group of three and then a single. So no problem there. Lighting is the harsh midday light. I'd underexpose slightly. Uh, let's see. Creativity, your title is very tricky, I gotta say. You did good there with creativity. Post-processing, I'd crop the left, as I said. I re would remove that guy. And I'll tell you what else I would do. I would do a little bit of cloning on this guy's butt right here. And I'll tell you why. Because you may, if you're gonna break all the rules and you're gonna go for it, you may want to make this your shot. Give it a try and see what you think. I mean, you've, you've all seen the shots of the zebras standing side by side or face to face and, and the patterns look crazy. See what you can do with that. So let's review the breaking all the rules. You did a merge, you did animal butts, you did a bother in the background, a little bit of a highlight, but the great thing is you can fix it all. And then you'll have to change the title, of course. 
Who did the image? It's Elaine Shook. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for understanding my title. I wasn't sure if you would. <laughs> um, I tend to be a little bit of a rebel when it comes to um, <laughs> compliance in art rules, if you will. Um, <laughs> Uh, you hit it right on, though. The cardinal rule is never to shoot an animal in the butt, but I really don't <laughs> care because I happen to like animal butts. And I didn't have much control over the direction um, that they were headed. This was on sure. a safari. Um, was on a safari in midday. Didn't have any control over the lighting either, though I do agree perhaps bringing the, the whites or the highlights down a little bit might help. Um, Decapitated that one giraffe on the left side, the second cardinal rule. Um, I did not want to crop him out because I happen to love that craggy tree in there. Um, ah, right. I, I think that really lends to the composition. Um, so that's why I left it in there. I thought, hey, he's just a renegade. Um, that's the way it was. I, I couldn't uh, order him to move over to the other side, unfortunately. Um, I just kind of, I, I just liked the, uh, the movement of these animals. They weren't moving <clears> fast, but they were obviously moving away from the vehicle we were in. Um, again, I liked the composition of the tree. I liked the, the, uh, kind of the gradient shades of green and yellow in it, but, um, yeah, yeah bringing, um, down the highlights should help a little bit with all of that. Thank you. Now, uh, I'm going to make sure I have this straight. You consider yourself a bit of a renegade, and you refuse to crop out that renegade on the left. I see the pattern there. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, uh, you might want to look at a photographer named Greg Dutois. It's G R E G D U T O I T. Greg Dutois, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, he's got some awesome stuff like this. So maybe you'll get some inspiration there too. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Oops, there we go. Okay, now I, I talked to Elaine. It's funny that, that your picture is followed by this one. I asked her if I could use her as somebody to follow for inspiration. So whoever took this photograph, you may want to look at Elaine's work on Facebook as far as flowers go. And her last name is spelled S-C-H-U-C-H. -S -S Am I right, Elaine? Correct. Okay. Uh, the other person I want to mention is Harold Feinstein. He also is a flower photographer. So maybe you'll get some inspiration from those two. Uh, what you did well is, and this uh, may be a little bit of a surprise, I loved your use of negative space. And the negative space, an easy way to, to explain that is it's where nothing is really. So your negative space is beautiful. And you also, I like that you used a cool color to fade into the background and a, I will call this a warm color, especially the yellow, to jump forward. So you did nice work there. You recognized the patterns. You used your colors well, complementary colors, of course. Um, be careful about the sharpness, especially when there's tons of detail like this. So be careful with that. Uh, let's see. Uh, I mentioned being careful with the focus. The exposure is, is excellent. It's smooth. Um, it's even. In this case, you don't really need any shadows, is my opinion. Uh, your composition is a good balance of negative space and positive space. So you have a group here, and it's balanced by negative space here and here. You have a nice group in here which is balanced out around by the negative space. So you did a good job there. Um, sometimes stuff happens and it's not on purpose, but I think that really adds to the depth of your, of your shot. Uh, if you remember, darker values recede 
and lighter values advance. So that, that creates your, um, your depth. So good job there. As far as distractions go, just a couple little things that I might remove. I may remove that and this and this, mainly because they're right at the edge of the frame. That's really the only reason I would, I would take those out. I realize I'm being super picky, but I'll say it again. If you, if you print any of your work big, these will get big right along with it. So good work there as far as um, um, not having all that going on in here. And these are easy fixes for sure. Uh, the lighting I said was smooth and even, which is really appropriate here. Uh, your use of color is a complementary scheme. You have the lavender and the yellow, which is really, really nice. Even a couple little reds here to add some variety. So good work with that. Uh, as far as processing, clean up the spots. Depending on what you want, try a little bit of um, contrast and see what that does for you. If it creates any more depth. If you like it smooth like this, then don't bother with the contrast. It's just an idea. Okay, who did this one? Mike, it's mine, Mary. Um, that was taken at Adam Ritchie Park when we were oh. there last summer or last fall. And um, thank you for your comments because I knew you were going to pick out some spots and I didn't, I missed them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, I, I couldn't, I, it wasn't sharp. I didn't know what I did or didn't do, but it, it's definitely not as sharp as I'd like it to be. But, um, the receding was by accident. It was, um, I just took it and I, I like the darkness of the certain areas. Yeah. And I, I kind of tend to do that for just a habit, I think sometimes. And um, they, I, I love your comments because I'm gonna try them. I'm gonna try the contrast, like you said. And it was the yellow dots that got me. I mean, they just kind yeah. of like springing right at me, you know, so. Well, they, they do spring right at you because of their, their opposite of the color wheel is right there behind them. So that's, that's nice, good catch there. Wow, well, it was just a grab shot, Mike, but thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, number 10 is Pure Peace. Um, a photographer that does a lot of, uh, I guess you say wetlands work is Greg Molino. Greg Molino, M-O-L-Y-N-E-U-X. Greg Molino. Uh, your exposure is absolutely wonderful. You've got detail everywhere, everywhere, which is nice because that makes the scene even more real. It even makes you feel more like you're there. Uh, your composition is good. Again, the, um, the color scheme in the sky separated by the green is really nice. I don't know, it, it may be that you'd have fallen in the water. I, I was undecided on, on this being cut off there, but I have a feeling that that's something that you had to live with. Uh, the light is great. You absolutely grabbed that. Your focus is good, your exposure is good, no hot spots, no blackouts. Uh, I like your composition, the fact that you have a lead in, you have some repeated shapes here, which are, are really beautiful. I like the contrast of form actually. And we talk about triangulation. You've got one right here that leads into the image perfectly and a huge, long skinny one that keeps you going. So you start in, this doesn't stop me because I pick up on the next triangle and away you go. Beautiful. Here's some beautiful repetition here. Really, really nice work. That gentle curve really takes a person through the image. As far as distractions go, nothing that's bothersome. If I'd say, well, this little white thing here, well, that's not, this is a much lighter value than this. 
So this will be noticed first. <coughs> Excuse me. The lighting is beautiful. The golden hour, um, the rim light here on the posts is absolutely great. Good work. Very good work. Um, let's see. Oh, I know what I wanted to mention. I, I was doing, I'm doing a color class right now. I'm, I'm taking it. And one of the things they mentioned was when you have opposites on the color wheel, like the orange and the blue, this comes in between and it's kind of a bridge. So it's not just all orange and blue. So this was a nice, nice inclusion here as far as color goes. Uh, great work, really nice image. Who did this one? Lynn Garwood. Um, this was down in the Outer Banks in November, I think it was, and it was just the most spectacular sunset I'd ever seen. And um, this was just one of the many that I took that I really love. It's beautiful. It gives you it gives you the peaceful feeling, which is a nice message for you to give us, especially now. Yeah. Thank you. So good work. Thanks. Uh, the New York skyline. Whoever did this, you might find from inspiration in the work of Andrew Prokos, P-R-O-K-O-S, who does uh, a lot of New York City stuff. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful use of long exposure, long shutter speed, I should say. Um, the black and white is perfectly appropriate for this shot. It, the water is smooth, the sky is smooth, which lends me to believe it's a long exposure. The flag is a little soft, so I'm sure it's a long exposure. Really, really nice. Uh, a couple of suggestions as far as processing. I would tone, ugh, I would tone down this building a little bit. Um, actually, I did some research on this building, and it's a, a mini storage building. It's the Manhattan mini storage. I would tone that down because it's fighting with what you want as your center here, and I would tone this down a little bit too. But I, I love the fact that these clouds start here. And so does um, the Brooklyn Bridge start there. So really, really nice, beautiful work with the sky and the water. Your contrast is great without being totally burned out. Great work of long exposure. Now the sky is gritty, but that's perfect for this image. New York City's gritty. So very, very good choice there. Uh, you've got the foreground, the middle ground, the background, the depth, the bridge, the Brooklyn Bridge balances with this is um, FDR drive. The bridge balances perfectly with that. Your lighting pulls to right here to the center. You can look at it two ways. You can start here and go or you're coming in on the bridge, you can pull right into the Verizon building and so on. Really, really nice composition. Um, the distractions I mentioned already, and I, I simply would darken a few of these, that's all. Uh, let's see, I like your choice of darkening the sides, kind of like a side vignette almost. That brings even more attention to where you want it to be. Uh, let's see. Creative use of light for sure and processing. You definitely were creative there. Uh, I think that's all that I have to mention. I, the composition's good. I, I love this. I really did like it. Who did this one? That's me, Joe Farrell. And uh, that was early in the morning. We got there when it was dark and uh, we had a very windy day. So in the upper, air was very windy and so we had really streaky clouds. That was a uh, two and a half minute exposure <laughs> to get that effect. And it took many different shots to try and get that look. Cause you know, you can't really judge that until yeah. you see it. And uh, so that's what it was. It was an ISO 200 and was an F11. Um, 
and uh, 21 millimeter lens. And um, that's it. It was a wonderful day. Yeah, for sure. It's a beautiful and shot too. Thank you for your comments about the lightning of that uh, storage building on the right particular. <laughs> okay, now I'll never, I'm going to do that. As soon as I'm done with this meeting tonight, I'm going to darken that sucker up. <laughs> okay. well, at least see what you think anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the Silk Mill Elevator. Um, there's another photographer who does the abandoned things. Her name is Alicia Rius, R-I-U-S. So whoever did this, you might wanna look at her work for some inspiration as well. Uh, your exposure is, is on the money for sure. It looks nice and sharp. Your lighting is smooth, which is kind of crazy because it's a, an abandoned, creepy, wrecked place but it looks so smooth and beautiful uh one suggestion that i might have for a crop and it might be that something's there i understand is if you're going to go for the symmetrical then check this as opposed to this and see if you can pull this out just a little bit to balance both sides but that's that's being fussy which i can be fussy because this work is really good uh, it's calm, it's vintage, slightly desaturated, which makes it look old, which is completely appropriate for the shot. Uh, there's detail in all the area, nothing's burned out. Lots and lots of values. And by values, I mean, here's a dark value, intermediate value, a light value. Here's another value, another. And you can see that they work their way back through the image to the main star, the main subject. Also, um, your framing, you have a zillion frames there, which is really good, repeated shapes. You have lots of rectangles. And then even though it may not look like it, you've got this one triangle right here. And that, is enough to make it stand out from everything else. You also have a little circle here, which does not de detract from anything else. It adds a little bit of, um, makes it so it's not all the same, but this being here like, like so makes it pop, at least for me anyway. Uh, distractions, couple white spots on the floor I'd get rid of. They don't do anything to help your shot. I know they're really there, I understand. But except for here, these are the brightest value in your shot. They're even a little bit brighter or just as bright as here. So you want everyone to go right to here with no interruptions. Uh, your lighting is smooth and beautiful, excellent for a vintage feel. I like your use of blue and orange, and you've got this rusty red here as, a, as an accent color. But the blue and the orange really, really looks good. Even have a little bit of an orange glow here with this. Very nice, as I said, complementary colors. Uh, let's see. As far as your processing, I like the fact that it's a bit light, as it's a bit undersaturated, that adds to the feel. Um, I think that's all I have for that. If you, you might, this is a good image if you wanna play around with any kind of textures or anything like that, you might wanna try some of that on too. Okay, who did this one? Uh, that's mine, Kurt Wilkie. Um, that was taken in 2014. Oh my um, gosh. Yeah, I, I, I was just reviewing some uh, photos I took down at the Silk Mill because um, the trip's coming up this Saturday. Lana Coning? Yeah. Okay. And uh, so I pulled this one out and I reprocessed it. I re took the bracketed photos. This is an HDR shot. And I took the oh. bracketed shot, photos, merged them, and, uh, and uh, worked with them with the uh, newer software. Yeah, that's why it's so smooth and creamy, huh? Yeah, I guess it's cheating. No, no way. Absolutely not. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. You're welcome. I won't lie about this one. This actually choked me up. 
because I, I, things that happened in my family history kind of got to me when I looked at this. This is absolutely tremendous. And I'm, I'm going to explain why I really like it. First of all, a photographer that will be inspirational to you is Olivia Parker. Olivia Parker. And when you go to her website, if you do, click on Still Life 2001 to 2008. And her lighting is a lot like this. Olivia Parker, click on Still Life 2001 through 2008. Uh, great, great use of depth of field here. The colors are just perfect for this feeling. Um, it just screams kids. The primary colors, the red, green, and blue back there. Um, the, the, the beak is just a touch of orange, which is really nice. Uh, let me get back to my sheet here. I'll, I'll lose my place. I'll tell you what, what it made me think about is I have a pair of shoes from when I was a baby when they used to put bronze on the shoes. When, when um, kids outgrew their shoes, their first baby shoes, parents would take them somewhere and have them coated in bronze. And in fact, I, I have them right back here behind me with a picture of myself as a teeny weeny squirt. And this made me, made me think of that. It choked me up, it really did. Um, it, it's a, just a great story. It's just the title is wonderful. Uh, you use depth of field very, very well. And I, if you thought of this, you get, you get a gold star because what I noticed is here, these are sharp, a little bit softer, and a little bit softer, which is how memories actually work and how you're thinking back to your childhood. And, and it kind of takes you back in time to a toy that a toddler would play with and then back to a toy that just a little tiny baby would play with. Good use of depth of field there. No hot spots. The print is clean. And that is great because you have color fields there that easily could cause problems. And, and they don't. There's no specks, no spots, nothing that I saw. Your composition is, believe it or not, triangular here. And here. And actually, the whole entire thing. Really, really nice. Past, present, future, um, today, yesterday, tomorrow, that kind of thing. Uh, no distractions. The lighting is smooth. The lighting is, I have that it's simple and childlike. I, I love that the inside of the shoe is lit. That is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, the touch of red and orange are a great balance. As the objects get further away, they get softer. I mentioned that. Your processing is really good. I love the story. I just love the story. Who did this one? Hey, Mike. Uh, thanks. This is uh, Dave Marchetto. And thanks uh, for the um, reminder of the trip down memory lane. <laughs> I... Um, I really appreciate that. When I started this, I never thought I'd be washing and ironing baby <laughs> shoelaces, but you know, whatever, whatever it takes. Exactly. And you know, I tried every uh, aperture uh, on my lens uh, for depth of field, absolutely everyone, uh, just to see how I, how I was satisfied or dissatisfied. And uh, that's as sharp as I, I could get it. And, you know, I, I did like the fall off. That's why I, I yeah. positioned the duck sort of in the middle, the scene stealing duck that shouldn't be looking <laughs> into the camera. <laughs> but, but, and speaking of the color wheel that you've been talking about, I threw every color in there I could, Mike, and just hoped it was on the color wheel. Yeah, you're good. Hey, Dave. <laughs> hey, Dave. <laughs> Hey, this is Diane. I think you, I love your, 
your still lifes. But I think <laughs> you should have left the shoelaces dirty <laughs> and, and left the shoes scuffed because that's how they end up with little kids. But, uh, well, then I should take a picture of the bottom because I didn't I didn't clean up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really I like appreciate your, that, Diane. Thanks very much. I love it. Thank you so much. I like so your much. shadows here too, Dave. Thank you. Thank you. Really nice. Nice job. Dave, I appreciate your comments, Mike. Dave, sure. can I ask you a question on how yeah, did you yeah. light the how did you light the inside of those shoes? <laughs> Joe, you know I have the one light theory, which is one more light. And I had a I had like a, a spotlight on the insides of the shoes. And uh, I think I had like maybe, not because I knew what I was doing, but probably five <laughs> lights on that. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, balancing act. Um, you may wanna look at a bird photographer named Thomas Hempelman, H-E-M-P-E-L-M-A-N-N, -E -N -N, Thomas Hempelman. And you'll maybe get some inspiration there. Uh, I, I like the fact that you caught the eye, of course. It has a catch light in it. The bird is framed. You have some natural framing going there. Uh, as far as processing goes, I do have a question about in your processing, if you use some kind of a, a filter or a texture, I'll get to that later. Uh, as far as what you might do in processing, really, I would remove these. Now this is, it's close, really, really close, but it would be a nightmare to fool with that. Um, if you wanna try and remove it, okay, but you also remove part of the frame as well. As far as removing things, I'd hit these two. I'd hit this. You notice I'm working my way around the frame. I might hit this and this. The things around the frame usually will catch the eye. So you may wanna remove some of those things or darken them or, or whatever you choose. But that's my suggestion as far as processing goes. Uh, the exposure is good. I, like I said, I'm curious to hear about whether there's any kind of filter on or not. Um, there's a couple hot spots in the background that is, it's an easy fix. You can get rid of this and this and these, that's that you can take care of. Um, I shouldn't say that because for some of us, it's very difficult to make it look natural and get rid of those things. Anyway, that's something I'd consider doing. Uh, the composition, the bird is framed. Um, there's a little bit more room here than there is here, which I think is good. It gives a little more space for the bird to look into. Um, I keep calling it the bird, it's a black crowned night heron. It gives it room to look into, which I think is always good as far as an animal or even a person goes. Um, distractions, I already went around the frame and do that yourself. Um, go around the edge of the frame and see if there's anything that's bothersome to you. We tend to get fixated on the main subject and we forget about what's around the edges. Uh, your lighting is really good. You have a little bit of a warm uh, yellowish either light or the feathers are that color from dunking into the water. Um, I like that though. It, it makes it look like a late afternoon light. Uh, the colors are true to the bird. I like that. Um, let's see. Your title is good. I didn't even, at first, I didn't notice it was just one leg showing. So that's that's good. Uh, let's see. I think that's, I think that's all that I have for that one. I do, oh, no, I know. I also like this, which night herons have, but it's great that you got it and it really does pop for sure. Okay, who did this one? Yeah, thanks, Mike. That's Rod Frazier. Wow. And uh, yeah, thanks for t t showing me about the, the twigs coming out the bird's head. <laughs> You're welcome. Think, I didn't even think about that. And uh, yeah, I did a lot of, of masking 
uh, with the bird. Okay. And uh, playing with the textures and the colors and, and the hues and, until I got it so that it, it looked uh, pretty close to what I actually saw at the time. Oh, good. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I guess I could have dropped down the highlights. I didn't even notice those when I took the shot. Yeah. Yeah. And that'll, as I said before, um, the value of this is way, way brighter than the value of this. So this will be the attention getter. When I say value, I mean, um, like if you, I don't know if you've ever seen um, Ansel Adams had uh, zones, he called them. And it started with black and ended with white. And that's, that's how values work, even if it's colors. There's like a lighter yellow and a darker yellow. So that's how values work there. So yeah, work on those and, and get those out of there. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Oh, you're welcome. Mike, I have a question about this one. Um, you, you pointed out the um, sticks coming out above the beak and the head. Yes. Well, where do you draw the line? Because there's another <laughs> one. There's another one here, and there's one coming out of the chin, and there's one coming out of the chest. And you I know, know. I, I mean, this is a real challenge when you're taking birds. Oh and, my gosh, yes. And and so, how do you know when to stop and how much is enough? The main the main idea for me here is to get this away from the head and the eye. Yep. That's the main thing. This one's coming out of the back, but nobody notices. So I would say the important part is close to the head and the eye. Now this, you think, oh, well, what a pain. It actually runs parallel to the beak. So I, I didn't say anything about it. This is part of the framing. It's really, really tight, but I don't want to be ridiculous. So my, my answer to that is if you can get like a clear head or a clear face, then that's the important thing. Okay, thanks. Sure. And that's the end. Okay, well, Mike, thank you very much. That was very instructive. If uh, everyone would please unmute themselves, we'll uh, give Mike the traditional <laughs> round of applause. <laughs> Great work, Mike. <laughs> thank you. Mike. Does so anyone have any questions or comments for Mike? Any Thank you, Mike, very much. That was You're excellent. Welcome. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Mike I, wanted to, I wanted to comment on, on how um, your specifics and how helpful they were yeah. and, and how, um, how much depth there was in your reviews. It was wonderful, I thought. So you you weren't thinking I was a picky jerk? No, I was thinking it was actually very helpful. I have a oh, good. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Okay, guys, just a reminder. We've got uh, tomorrow night, the Harrisburg Night Photography. Saturday, Hershey Gardens. And next Monday night, Mark Bowie and Trees. Okay, thank you for attending tonight. As usual, I'll put, up the, uh, put out the follow-up email tomorrow morning with a link to the recording and a reminder about the other upcoming events. So thank you and good night. Good night. Good night Thanks, thank you, Mike. Thanks again, Mike. You're welcome. Thank Bye. you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Welcome. <laughs>